Hey, welcome back, everybody. Jeff Frick here with theCUBE. It is Data Privacy Day, which I just found out has been going on for like 20 years or 30 years. Uh, so we're happy to be at our very first one. We're in downtown San Francisco at the Twitter headquarters. It's a full day event and it's actually happening around the world. But we're here in San Francisco and excited to have you know some of the guests come down that are doing the panels and the discussions and the breakout sessions. And uh, we're excited for our next guest, Danielle Dixon, Chief Legal and Business Officer from Mozilla. That's welcome. Right. Thank you, happy so, to be here. So there was a spirited uh, panel to kick off the day. That's right. I wonder if you can share some of your thoughts as to some surprises that came out of that uh, that conversation. So not so many surprises, but we talked a lot about IoT and just the the Internet of Things, the Web of Things, whatever we want to call it, in term the, and the data that's available as a result of that to companies, to governments, to lots of different entities, and whether consumers understand that and the responsibilities uh, that both the consumers and the technology companies have with respect to that data. Right, and you know, Mozilla was obviously right there at the big change to go to you know a graphical web interface, mm -hmm. um, which was just a sea change in really the internet and how it interacted with people. IoT represents that same kind of thing, and oh, by the way, people are things too, as we like to say mm -hmm. on theCUBE. So as, as, as you kind of look at the new challenges faced by IoT, what are some of the things that, that, that bubbled to your priority list in terms of things that need to really be thought of that maybe people aren't thinking enough of now? Yeah, I, I think that one of the most important things about IoT and the, the idea that this is information that's collected and used by devices and technology companies uh, because of the fact that it can be wearable, it can be things that you have in your house that collect data as you're talking to it. One of the most important things, and just keeping Data Privacy Day in mind, is that we make sure that consumers are aware that this is actually happening, that data is being collected and sent and how that data is being used. It used to be, back in the day, we could have privacy policies, and we'd put them up 15 pages long and, and you know assume that users understood that. Well, that can't be used with respect to these kinds of devices, so we need to be innovative, we need to be creative. We need to be able to ask questions of these devices and have them tell us what's going on with the data that they collect and how they're doing that. So it's just as incumbent upon the technology companies that create these devices to ensure that users understand that as it is upon the users to understand that these kinds of transactions are happening and these trade-offs with respect to it. Really interesting, crazy, um, exciting in terms of the, the different technologies that we can use, but really important that we get this right. But it just it just strikes me that, that I think you know so many people just click yes, I accept. Mm -hmm. you know, are people really, I mean, I'm sure some people are, uh, you know, that, that are paying attention, but you know, it just seems that most people just click and accept, click and accept, click and accept, mm -hmm. especially if you've kind of got into that behavior pattern and right. haven't really thought about the way these applications are evolving, haven't really thought about Facebook on your laptop or on your PC at home mm -hmm. is different than Facebook on your mobile and haven't really thought about, wow, what are these connected devices now collecting data that, as you said, I don't even get the chance to opt in. So. You know, how do you educate people to to make intelligent choices, and how do we like you know break the EULA up maybe so that I can opt in for yeah. I want to share A, B, and C, uh, but not D, E, and F, and oh I, I forgot I, I really need F uh, to make this thing function. Yeah, it seems like a really complicated uh, kind of disclosure problem. It is complicated, and that doesn't mean that we don't have to crack it. So you said the word EULA, that's the end user legal agreement. And I don't think we can live in a world of EULAs. I think we live in a world where we need to put in context notices. We need to actually create so that your interface or whatever small thing that you have is able to alert you that this data is actually transpiring. So it has to be in context, it has to be creative. It has to be part of product development. It can't be an afterthought. Before, it used to be that they would hand this over to the lawyers and say, hey, can you help us figure out how to notify our users? This has to be part of our innovative process today. We're seeing more and more of it. We're seeing uh, technology companies take this seriously, include privacy by design in their product development, make these uh, in-context notices part of the way that they think about the product and not just about the afterthought. And so the more we do this, the better it's going to be for all of us, but it's actually just because it's hard, it means that it's a creative, thoughtful, amazing process that we all need to engage in. Right, so one of the hot topics uh, that we cover a lot is, is diversity in tech, and women in tech specifically, and, and you know, not only is it the right thing to do, but there's very clearly defined positive business outcomes when you have diversity of opinions mm -hmm. when you're making decisions. Is there a corollary to what you're describing in terms of being more forthright in your privacy policy that's really you know, not a it's the right thing to do, 
question, which is fine, but is there, you know, kind of real business benefit that, that you can see or you project that's going to be even a better motivator for people to start changing the behavior in the way in which they disclose or interact with people on the privacy yeah, issue? Yeah, I just, I love the way you introduced that because from my standpoint, one of the things that we don't like to do, that we don't like to be in life is surprised. And so one of the most important things is if you think about everything as a no surprises rule. So if we start uh, thinking about business and our engagement with our users as creating a no surprises opportunity, it actually creates trust. It, it fosters uh, deeper engagement. It makes it so that we are all going to be happier in terms of that relationship. Maybe the users actually give more to the product. Maybe the product can actually then give more to the user. So this no surprises role and the way that we can operate creates really nice business cycles and really nice interesting dynamics between consumers and the businesses that they use. Yeah, it's, it's, it's great the trust, the trust word and it also plays into kind of the services. You know, everything is a service because mm -hmm. when everything is a service, you have to maintain a solid ongoing relationship. It's not a one-time purchase, no. adios, I'm never gonna see you again. And so uh, that really plays into this. If it's a trusted service provider that you feel good about, you know, you continue to pay that, you know, 995 to Spotify right. or, or, or whomever that service provider. So it's a really different way of looking at the world. It is, and it's one of the things that we actually encourage from the very outset is this kind of creation of trust. Trust is really easy to lose with respect to your consumer base, and it's the most important thing as you're engaging. We created these uh, initiatives called the Lean Data Practices, and then we also have privacy initiatives that we put out there for uh, startups and for other entities that they can um, utilize and, and hopefully create for their businesses. Part of it is the no surprises rule, but it's also think about what data you want to collect so that, that you actually are collecting what you need, throw away what you don't, anonymize it, like really create that trusted relationship because you can always grow. Like if you think I actually need more data today than I did when I started a year ago, it's a great way to have that conversation with your consumer base. So it's one of the things, trust starts it all. So from Mozilla's standpoint, we operate that through our products because we definitely have that in our Firefox browser and the other products that we have on mobile. But one of the things is that we care about is creating this awesome opportunity for the web to continue to grow. And so we care about how other companies are approaching this too. Right. So you mentioned Firefox and you guys have a, a, new, a new product yeah. coming out uh, today, uh, Firefox Focus. So uh, explain to folks, what is Firefox Focus? Why should they care? What's different than just kind of traditional Firefox? Right, so we've had Focus in um, iOS before, and today we actually launched it in 27 languages, so 27 different um, areas that you can get it. It's a, it's a privacy-focused browser, but it can also be performance-focused so that you actually have content um, you can, it excludes the collection, some content doesn't get pushed through so that your performance is faster, and you can really focus on what kind of data that you want to share with companies. So try it out. I think it's an awesome experience, certainly from the standpoint of privacy, but also from performance. All right. So Danelle, 2017, we just flipped the calendar a few weeks ago. As you look forward uh, in the year, you probably went through your annual mm -hmm. uh, uh, planning process. What are some of your priorities for 2017? What are you looking forward to? Um, that, that are top of your list for the next uh, 12 months? So it's really the top of, I, I, I run the policy business and legal teams at Mozilla from a policy standpoint, really focused on encryption, security, privacy, looking at the new administration here in the US as well as what's happening in Europe. I think it's a really important area for us to focus on. From a business standpoint, I wanna see us really dive into growth with respect to Firefox um, as our desktop browser. I wanna see our mobile space grow um, and grow even outside the browser. So I'm really excited about how and what we can do there. And then from the legal side, I want to continue to push the envelope on this no surprises with respect to doing that in more areas that we can with respect to our products and pushing that idea outside too. I love that, no surprises. This looks like a bumper sticker. Yeah. <laughs> All right. She's Danelle. I'm Jeff. You're watching theCUBE. We'll see you next time.